This triage procedure should occur in conjunction with normal first responder checks for ABCs, spinal, and other secondary injuries. This repackaging procedure should only be attempted in a protected environment and normally would occur if transport to hospital would last longer than about 30 minutes. Our rescue team is bringing our victim in in a Stokes litter. And as usual, they have been very gentle. They've taken their time. They kept the victim horizontal. And now as part of a triage, we want to determine what level of hypothermia the patient is in. And they know he's wet, so that we want to dry him off and diagnose how cold he is. Now our history has told us that this patient was in the water for about an hour or so. He had a PFD on and he's not responsive at all. And he's cold to touch and he's not shivering and he's not conscious. We can consider this person severely hypothermic. So we have to be extremely, extremely careful because any kind of jostling of this patient could put him into immediate ventricular fibrillation. And if you understood the principle that a severely hypothermic person could be put into ventricular fibrillation if you move them around at all, you can imagine how difficult it would be to take the clothing off, especially in a Stokes litter like this. So you have to cut the clothing off. Again, when you're drying off a cold patient, you do not want to rub the skin, you do not want to pat the skin. You want to place a towel over top and just gently blot the water off the skin. And now using a standard procedure, the paramedics are going to lift the victim as carefully as possible. Two-man lift to put him onto the gurney inside a sleeping bag, which we're going to insulate him with in a few moments. We have a charcoal heater here that we can use to rewarm the patient during transport to the hospital. It should be noted that the charcoal heater should not be used in the presence of 100% oxygen because of possible explosion hazard. This is the primary heat combustion chamber, so we want to place this right on the chest because that's where the heart is. We want to eventually warm the heart up and we can put these heat ducts under the arms So as you can see, we actually have heat on the chest, on the neck area, and in the armpits, and there's, these are all areas of high heat transfer. So if we zip them up and put them in this insulated cocoon, that 250 watts that this unit produces will eventually provide a very good rewarming force for this patient. 